I'm grateful that you could make time to join us. The details now. The Ghana Medical Association has condemned the disregard for COVID-19 protocols at the funeral of Sir John, which was held in the Ashanti region. Here's a statement uh, issued a while ago expressing displeasure about the manner in which authorities watched unconsent for total disrespect of laws enacted to check the spread of COVID-19. And it says the Ghana Medical Association has noted with disappointment the total disregard for COVID-19 protocols during the final funeral rites of the former Chief Executive Officer of the Forestry Commission, lawyer Kudro Uwusue Frie, also known as Sir John. This mass gathering of people with complete disregard for physical distancing and limited use of face masks occurred in the wake of a caution by the World Health Organization to some African countries to prepare For what appears to be a new surge in COVID-19 cases in Africa, the GMA was therefore shocked to observe that a nation like ours struggling to vaccinate its population will permit such a potential super spreader event to take place and be attended by top government functionaries, including His Excellency the President and the Vice President of the Republic. The memories of the cat catastrophic consequences of the surge in COVID-19 cases in January to February 2021 including that of the many lives lost and the pressure our healthcare system came under during that surge is fresh on our minds. We should not forget that the surge was occasioned by similar mass gatherings associated with the political activities and Christmas festivities in November, December 2020. The GMA condemns such activities that violate our protocols and has a tendency to reverse all gains made in our fight against COVID-19. The statement goes on to say we call on the law enforcement agencies to investigate and deal with the organizers of this and any similar events to serve as a deterrent to others who intend to endanger the public health of our nation. We call on the Inspector General of Police to act without fear or favor in this regard. The general public is encouraged to continue to abide by all the COVID-19 protocols and refrain from such mass gatherings and activities that endanger our collective survival. The GMA wishes to reiterate that COVID-19 is still real and a present threat to our country and calls on all to adhere to the preventive protocols for the safety of all. And this statement is signed by Dr. Frank Ankobia, who is president of the GMA, and Dr. Justice Youngson, the association's general secretary. Well, earlier on news this guy, I discussed this issue with lawyer Martin Pebu, who, uh, among other things, suggested a relook at the executive instruments on uh, the COVID-19 uh, protocols. Uh, we'll bring you that video much later. To education now, in the NDC's 2020 running mate, Professor Jainana Opukwajaman, has accused government of using threats of transfer to silence teachers who attempt to voice challenges facing the senior high school program. The free senior high school program has come under public scrutiny with many parents demanding government improves the quality of the program. Speaking on the probe with MFR Powell, the professor said censorship of critical voices will impact the quality of the program. And what hurts me is that you can use transfer as punishment. You should never do that because the children in the rural areas must go to school too. And if you are telling the teacher that by speaking out, I'm transferring you to a rural area, it means you are not serious about raising the quality of education among the rural area people from where we all came. We shouldn't just sit here and forget. We are supposed to be here to support and to make things better everywhere. Okay. So it shouldn't be trivialized into saying that oh, there are problems everywhere. There will be problems going forward too. Now, the former education minister called for a national dialogue to review the shortcomings and successes of the free senior high school program. She also challenged government to show evidence of whether it's been able to fulfill the promise to convert all these schools to boarding schools and expand infrastructure. 
former minister, a vice presidential candidate, so former minister to the other, at least uh, to the current minister. If we, you need to speak to him directly, Dr. Yawase Duchum, in terms of rethinking and uh, reshaping the current free SHS policy as we have it now, what would it be? First of all, he must admit, he must come clean and say, I need help. We'll give the help. But if the reaction from government, that's quoting you, mm. that there's nothing wrong and everything is fine, I'd have no advice to give a person like that who doesn't need advice. Okay? So if he admits there are problems, or if, if you, you can turn the question around and ask me, if you don't mind. Oh, I'm a teacher, not? so easy. sometimes I do of that. Of course. <laughs> and if you ask me, what would you have done if you had won the election mm -hmm. and you had this problem? Mm -hmm. Then I'll tell you something else, so you can do that. Okay. So if you had won the <laughs> Since election, I my own that's question. okay. I may as well answer election, my own question. What would you have done differently? I think I made a few points at the beginning. First mm -hmm. of all, it's open the space for people to speak. Don't go in cowering anyone that if you speak, I'm um, transferring transfer you. It. If you speak, I'm demoting you. If you speak, oh, that kind of harassment and attitude will not give you the results you need. You so that, that would have been the first go. Talk to them and see. You okay. had joy. You did the interviews. Mm. What did they say? Mm. Uh -huh. So you have the answer to that one. <laughs> <laughs> so so th that will have to go. You have to be willing to listen. You see, sometimes it's not always what you want to hear that people say. Because you are not everywhere. They are there. And they are telling you these are the issues. Maybe they've said it in, even in a way that's annoying. But you see, you can put that aside and listen to the content of the complaint. And it's your duty to go and fix it, you fix it. From where you sit, finally, <laughs> are you sure that there is hope when it comes to education in Ghana? If the people in charge are saying there are no problems, then we have a very big problem. Mm. Okay? I don't know what there is to hide. And if you admit you need help, there's nothing wrong with it. Now, the sector minister, Dr. Yao Educhum, speaking during a press briefing, said some 1.5 billion CDs has been uh, allocated to be spent over the next three years to improve infrastructure, which will deal with the controversial double track system, a feature of the free senior high school policy that has been heavily criticized. Away from education, the newly approved transport fares are beginning to bite hard on public transport users. Last week, the GPRTU announced a 13% increase in fares to cushion transport operators as fuel cost rises. Even though the review took effect on Saturday, June 5, the new week is revealing the real impact on passengers. My colleague Manuel Kranting has been speaking to some public transport users who are caught in the Monday morning rush hour. A, an odoko bound trotro from circle um i mean before now the fare cost about two cities 50 pesos from um kwame kuma circle to odoko but well, this morning that's a different picture it's costing two cities 80 pesos that's a 30 pesos increment from the old um, price that they used to pay and that culminating to what you call a 13 percent increment um announced by the transport operators i mean i've seen the general compliance in the car um perhaps because of what you call a proof of the newly agreed fares and that's what you're seeing in your shot currently it is hanging in almost every truck truck that i have seen this morning just to do away with what you call argument and uh, you know <laughs> fisticuffs within um, the vehicle but uh, as, as, as we're doing this let me just try and speak to the mate and ask uh, what what the mood has been so far since they began charging the new fares. Papa mate, morning, baby aboko. Baby aboko. Na on shall max ni shall max ni yeka kray. Aha. Na da bena mo Saturday je fesi. Saturday. Saturday. Na mo Saturday je na obi atu ya obi a comply. Ya je bi an kasa. Obi an kasa. Da da da. E che se obi ani aje. Obi an tasi. Obi ani aje. Oh yeah sure. Yeah sure. And then say go for no mo tu ya no mo tika no mi so mo. Madam. Aje you are you are happy paying what 30 pesos more for the same distance, correct? Yes, because I have no choice. And that's the third year collecting, so I have to pay for it. You have no choice. 
and um, Ben, this is the bustling, the hustling and bustling in the Ghanaian truck truck. You'd have to get down, get somebody to drop. This is not your typical Uber or your boat, or as for you who who drives um, wherever you go. Well, we don't drive. We sit in a church and we have to drop for other people to drop and then join again. But well, Ajay, you're telling me that you you have no other option than to pay. But I mean, when you look at how much you're earning, and then you look at how much you're having to pay for the same distance. I mean, as a citizen, as somebody who bought the transport vehicles, how does that make you feel? Well, I'm not happy because. Your salary is still the same, but you have to pay more than what you have been paying for transport. And they are not at fault. The, the prices have been increased, so they have to also increase in order to break even. So okay. I have to pay it like that. You have to do it like that. Hey, let me talk to you. about the you have I say Kasa no, I say one person over can be. Now, who they talk to first? Now, who they are going to be on? Many in the because me free job alone, but fifty job alone basi circle two eighty, fifty can the circle basi can the she two fifty. To which you say how me? I was so can they say and touch it. To the other be free fee, but no be dinu a circle fee. To Lord friend they hire pa. The other sika be free fee, but no be di answer. Be di answer wa kufie. Lord friend they dinu. Oh, Lord friend they dinu na fifty job alone but I wa calculate the share in a out. And they be our bah. Can see this, eh? Can see this every day. Can see this. They say I was so can touch it. We be to me grab a bobo or class a kufie. Um. Ben is telling me that well, he's coming all the way from Jowulu and he has to do like a transit, you know, uh, drop from one vehicle and join another. And we at that point again, we'll have to drop for people to get down from the vehicle. Uh, but just to explain to you what the gentleman over there was telling me, he was talking to me about um, how, you know, a day's a day's fares could cost as much as 10 Ghana cities uh, just from Jowulu um, to his base at Abosuka and where he actually uh, works. Let me talk to some more students. Well, he goes to the Accra Academy. What about you? Are you affected? Yes, I'm affected. How, how is that? Because when I come, they, they give me only 10 cities. They give you 10 cities? I start at Big Farm. I have to pay 2 cities, 2 SS, then come to Circle, then come and pick another car. If my chop money is even part. Your chop money is also part. Mm. So after paying everything, what, what are you left with? Left four CD, 20 pesos. Four CDs, 20 pesos. You're a day student. So you don't go for dining, do you? I don't go for dining. Okay. Yes. So you have to live on four CDs every day? Yes. If I'm come to I'll pick another car. <laughs> you know what four CDs can do? You have to stick to, um, you know, a regular gobe and plantain to be able to survive on four cities. But let me talk to um, uh, uh, this lady here. Mama, be able to call. Okay. When you say, I saw a cigar in the morning. I didn't know what I saw a cigar in the morning. Yeah, be a yes, sir. Okay. Now, what's your name? That's your name, Newtown. Ufi Newtown. It's your Oba and Oma increase the price. I'm going to go to the house. I'm going to go to the house. And Oma increase the price. Mm. say one time I make one tongue at your corner, would you call out you with Lord Fair with the best now? They say, Nay, they say, Market, you who sounds so well for last who fear would you have a bomb because say the Lord Fair and it dear and why it. Away from that, Ghana has experienced the largest relative increase in primary forest loss of all tropical countries. That's according to an analysis of satellite data published by the US-based World Resource Institute, WRI. The report says Ghana's loss of primary forest cover surged 60% from 2017 to 2018, almost entirely from its protected areas. Attempts at forestalling degradation of the forest have yielded limited success. John Yusuf Mahmoud Mohamed Burudin looks at the effect on economic trees cut down in the Tint Bipo Forest Reserve as a result. 
Emehame in the Chi language literally means don't come and worry me. But the name that is supposed to reflect in people's lives is quite the opposite. People give it a different sense of its name. Mehame has about 300 residents, mainly farmers surrounded by beautiful nature, rainforest. But within a few kilometers lies a sad reality, the destruction of Tintimbipo Forest Reserve. The chainsaw is falling on Tintimbipo's jungle. <laughs> Unlike in the past, there are no trees here to protect us when it rains, and the rainfall patterns have also changed. I am truly concerned by the destruction of the forest. The reserve was dominated by economical trees like Odum, Mahogany, Danta, among others. This forest used to be a virgin forest. Most of the trees like uh, Odum, Wawa, uh, Mansonia and the rest, most of the indigenous trees. But now the illegal chainsaw operators has cut down all the trees and illegal farming has uh, dominated in this forest. Due to that, the forest has been degraded. The loss of trees and other vegetation cover can cause soil erosion, fewer crops, increased greenhouse gases in the atmosphere, and a host of problems for indigenous people. Rainforests provide humans with more than just trees. Biodiversity loss causes sickness, poverty, and even wars. Thousands of plant species that provide human medicine would be lost. Many poor communities like Mehame won't get plant life for medication. In the past, we saw different animals, but now they have all moved. Normally, if you move into this forest, you will see a lot of animals in it. But due to the deforestation, you cannot find any animal in this forest. And the impact is too much. So we need people to come in to invest in tree planting so that the climate change, which is affecting us globally, can be reduced. The World Health Organization estimates about 80% of African population uses traditional urban medicine as part of primary health care. Lack of vegetation could result in rapidly increasing climate change. Rainforests are also known as carbon sinks. This means they consume carbon dioxide, clearing it from the atmosphere. Whilst aspiring to become industry friendly, Ghanaians must also spare a thought for the ecology. That is why Invorotech Bamboo Limited is restoring the degraded forest with bamboo. Chief Executive Officer Penis Dapa and her team are planting thousands of bamboo in Mehame and surrounding areas. Uh, what we do is we're trying to see how best we can restore the degraded lands with bamboo. Bamboo. Having we piloted our project in Bunahafo, in Banda and Kintampo, some of the communities, we are so happy that the Forestry Commission has given us one compartment of land to plant bamboo to restore the lands. Aside, we're looking at how we can develop the bamboo as a raw material base for industrial use. The initiative will not only provide vegetation to the environment, but create an economic empowerment program for women. We are also trying to see how best we can create economic empowerment for it. We trying to engage a lot of women on board as economic empowerment. We looking at how they can promote the industrial base. The choice of bamboo to restore the forest is because of its ability to produce more oxygen. We love the idea of we using bamboo to restore the degraded lands planting at the river banks because bamboo is renewable. As such, it prevents soil erosions. Um, it also generates a lot of oxygen that balances the carbon dioxide as a carbon sink.
So basically we like all the, these qualities of bamboo and aside it's very renewable and we can use it on industrial base too. Benny says environmental protection is a topmost priority. It is the hope of the organization that the Mahama Forest would be restored to protect lives and vegetation. A report by Mohamed Nuruddin. Nuruddin, with that report from Bipok Tinting, you're watching Join News Today with me, Benis Abubidu Lansa. Now, four Chinese have been convicted by a Kumase High Court for their involvement in illegal mining activities on a 40-acre land at, Obwa at Obwasi-based Seidu Fanzar School. Ohim Interior of our security desk reports there was drama at the court's premises when the Ghanaian wife of one of the Chinese stormed with their children to plead for leniency. Chinese nationals and a Ghanaian collaborator, Asamoa Kati, were arrested after a Kumasi High Court, presided by his lordship, Justice Emmanuel Senor Amedahe, granted an absconding warrant. They were arrested whilst mining goods under the protection of armed guards on land earmarked for a school. The convicts, who could not meet the bail condition of 200,000 Ghana cities each, with two sureties, were ordered by the court to deposit their passports and work permits for fear of absconding before the final determination of the case. They have since remained in prison custody since April 19, 2021, until Thursday when the court ordered their deportation. The court guarded three of the convicts had presented through their lawyer passport retention slips dated February and March. The court also heard three of the convicts applied for renewal of permits on May 4, 2021. But the court held that was impossible since they were in prison custody. Presiding judge, His Lordship Justice Amedahe, faulted officials at the Kumasi Office of the Ghana Immigration Service for deliberately accepting applications of the convicts against their mandates. Such applications, according to the court, are only done at the national headquarters. He appealed to Interior Minister to reconsider the use of discretion by immigration officers to issue resident permits to foreigners who arrive in the country on sister day visas. Among reliefs sought by the plaintiffs were declaration that the defendants' mining activities were illegal, damages for trespassing, and loss of the use of the land. They also sought special damages for destruction of foundation structures of development projects at a cost of 500,000 Ghana cities. Lawyer if for plaintiffs, Hans Kojokodia, tells Joy News his clients expected airport, more from the court. Lungs belonging to my clients at airport residential area, and those lungs were earmarked for industrial and commercial developments. All these pieces of land have been destroyed. So we're asking the court to give us some uh, amount of money representing the value of the land that they had destroyed and also asking for compensation. But as the court indicated, the interest of the state is, is paramount and is superior to that of an individual. Therefore, once they were not legally in the country, our interest against them will not be considered you know, above that of the country. So virtually we are, we are getting nothing, but if it is the interest of the country, then while they are deported, everything comes to a halt. We've gotten nothing out of it. It's a disappointment though, but they say it is the interest of the state. Counsel for the Chinese nationals, Benjamin Andor, is also not satisfied with the ruling. He says he will confer with his clients for the next line of action. We are so dissatisfied with the ruling, but that is the ruling of the court. In fact, we are bound by it. Uh, for now, I'll have to talk to my clients, take further instructions from them so that we know the next step to take. As the convicts were being sent back to the Kumasi Central prisons, the Ghanaian mistress of one of the Chinese appeared at the premises with three children 
including a four-day-old baby. 27-year-old Rebecca Oforiwa, who has been married to Lan Han Son since 2018, wailed as she pleaded for leniency for her husband. She told Joy News, deporting her husband could spell doom for her and the kids. Papa, you the accused persons were found guilty of violating sections 23-1 and 35-1-D of the Immigration Act 2000, Act 573. From Kumasi for Joy News, Oim Interior reporting. Now, guess what? Only 13% of mineral royalty paid by mining companies is returned to the communities where mining actually takes place. Daryl Kwao is standing by with details of these in business coming up shortly. Do stay. <music> Time for business. My name is Daryl Kwao. Now, only 13% of mineral royalty paid by mining companies is returned to the communities where mining takes place. Out of this amount, 4.95% goes to respective district assemblies, whilst the Mining Community Development Scheme, set up under the Minerals Development Fund Act, receives 4%. Charles Nixon Yaboa has more. According to the 2020 Ghana Chamber of Mines report, 4.05% of the mineral royalty goes to the traditional authorities and schools in the host mining communities. In excess, the share of mineral royalty that is used to support development in mining communities is negligible. Obviously, this is woefully inadequate to address the infrastructure shortfalls in the host of the country's mineral world. It is on the premise that the Chamber of Mines continues to urge government to increase the host community's share of royalties to 30% and earmark same for specific sustainable infrastructure projects in the mining communities. Eric Isubonte is the president of the Ghana Chamber of Mines. The poor state of mining communities is largely a function of the development status of the country, as well as an outcome of the mechanism for allocating and utilizing fiscal revenues realized from the extraction of mineral resources. Apart from the statutory proportion of mineral royalty that is returned to the host mining communities, all the other streams of fiscal revenue originating from the mining sector accrue to the central government. Meanwhile, figures from the Ghana Revenue Authority show that the mining and quarrying sector regained its position as the leading source of direct domestic revenue last year. Now, the Ghana Revenue Authority is intensifying sensitization amongst taxpayers in the Ashanti region. There's more in this report from Mona Lisa Frimpong. To support the COVID-19 expenditure, the government in March introduced a 1% increase in the VAT flat rate. The GRA is sensitizing customers on the implementation of the new VAT levy. Samuel Sechijodu is the area manager for the Ghana Revenue Authority in Ashanti. So we want to educate our taxpayers, the accountants and the auditors to know uh, how to and first to understand the new system and then to know how to calculate it. Because, for example, the new uh, the VAT levies and others that have come, VAT levies, uh, they started collecting in May and by June and then they have to start paying. So most of them have, have to know how to calculate it uh, so that uh, to help their clients so they can present very good uh, figures to their office, I mean, the accurate figures to the office. The GRA is implementing a cashless system across its offices in Ghana to reduce the spread of COVID-19. The move by GRA is targeted at achieving the national agenda of a cashless society. 
uh, there's a new cashless system. We want to avoid too much contact at the January office. Now the whole world is going uh, digital, and January is going digital. So very soon, you don't need to come to the office, come and pay taxes. You can just either sit in the office, do the online payment or online filing, or you start your bankers, and then they will pay for you. They no need to come to the office. I think it also helps in this uh, social distancing. Some participants commended the Ghana Revenue Authority for the move. And for the new taxes, although we are feeling it, but you cannot complain because the government needs taxes to be able to undertake his project and other things. And it's a laudable idea because from time to time we see um, GRE organize such programs for we the taxpayers and I think it's a laudable idea. They should continue doing it and it's going to go a long way to benefit all of us. And that's helped us in many ways by enlightening us to the new ways of completing the taxes and at the same time um, upgrading our knowledge and understanding on tax issues. It's very helpful. It the GRA is encouraging voluntary tax compliance among the population. Mona Lisa Frimpon reporting. More business news coming up on the marketplace at the top of the hour. Muftar is standing by with Sports News next. Hello everyone, welcome to Sports on Joy News today. I am Muftar Nabila Ablai. Earlier today, reports emerged from the camp of the Black Stars that midfielder Thomas Pate has been sacked by the technical team for reporting late. However, Joy Sports sources have revealed to us that the technical team gave him an opportunity to leave camp because he feels unwell. There's more in the foreign report. Reports on Monday morning suggested the Arsenal midfielder was sacked from camp for reporting late. However, Joy Sports sources have revealed that Pate reported to camp on Thursday alongside Jordan Ayo, Isako Fatau and three others. On Friday, the Ghanaian international held a meeting with a technical team led by CK Akono and requested to be excused from the team for the upcoming two friendly matches because he feels unwell. After a fruitful discussion with the technical team, Thomas Party was granted his request and he left camp on Friday. Sources described the report as absolutely false, whilst other members of the technical team questioned the source of the reports. Joy Sports and Stance, it was rather Tariq Fosu who was kicked out of camp by the 10 car team for reporting late. The Black Stars is currently in Rabat for a friendly match against the Atlas Lions. They will host AFCON 2015 champions Ivory Coast at the Cape Coast Sports Stadium on June 12. Now let's do some clap reports because yesterday it was the Mancha Derby between Accra House of Oak and Great Olympics. A goal was scored by Accra House of Oak's Isaac Mensah. Many had said that the ball had its own circumference crossing the line. However, for according to the coach of Great Olympics, Anna Walker, the ball, its entire circumference did not cross the line. Head coach of Accra House of Oak is Samuel Bodu, and he is demanding that technology is introduced in Ghana football. House of Oak's Isaac Mensah struck a ball from about 30 yards in the first half that appears to have had its entire circumference cross the goal line. However, referee and his assistant did not have a clear view of the ball, thereby overruling it from being a goal. Head coach of the team, Samuel Bodu, who appeared disappointed with the decision of the match day officials, has called for technology to be introduced into Ghana football. We got a lot of chances, we scored, and the lines went disallowed. The Azik Mensah's goals, I think the ball crosses the line. It's a, it's a clear goal, but the lines weren't disallowed. But I, mean, I don't want to talk about the officiating. Do you think that calls for some technology into our game? Exactly, because if that, that goal should have been awarded, then we, could have, we can't uh, even do much better than this. So obviously they are calling for some technology to come into the game and, and maybe help? Yeah, if you, if you can get some, uh, that, if it, can, it, will, it can help. When they bring it, it will definitely help the team. Now, so goal light technology, it will help. The singular decision of the referees, had phobia dropping two points after Maxwell Abekwe grabbed the equalizer for Great Olympics, cancelling Emmanuel Nete's strike. Head coach of the Wonder Club, Anno Walker, insists the entire circumference of the ball struck by Isaac Mensah did not cross the line. You know, I have to come from behind, so I'm, I'm satisfied. Mm. Now, um, you saw that goal that um, was disallowed from Isaac Mensah. You, you, you felt it was a goal? It wasn't a goal. The regulations say that the circumference of the ball must have its entirety crossing the line before it will be considered a goal. I am Muftar Nabila Ablai, and that is your sports for now. Head on to myjoyonline.com 
and read more sports stories. Coming up next is Showbiz. There's more news when you log on to myjoyonline.com. You're also very interactive on Facebook and Twitter. We are Joy News on TV. That'll be it from my team and myself. Have a very good afternoon. Don't go away yet. Coming up next is the market. Please do stay.